Have you been curious about what types of exercises you should do with the gym for osteoporosis? Today, we're going to look at the Lift More study that's gotten a lot of press time for bone health. And we're going to talk about the exercises that were performed in that study. I'll also go over how to safely do those exercises at the gym. I'm Sarah, and I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I'm also a BoneFit certified fitness instructor and a 500-hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. Before we get into today's demonstration, it's important to note that not all exercises are appropriate for everyone. As we go through these exercises, I'll be explaining what part of the body is being worked and how each exercise is beneficial for bone health. If these exercises are accessible for you, then I encourage you to do them safely. If these exercises are not accessible, know that that is totally okay. In fact, one of the exercises isn't even accessible for me. I'll show you what I can do with it as I work towards being able to do it, but I have a limited ability to do one of these exercises. In my experience working with people who have osteoporosis, I've come to realize that many people are not able to do these exercises. I think it's still beneficial to know what they are and what part of the body is being worked on because then it's possible to work on the same part of the body in a different way that's more accessible in your body. Take from this video the principles of what parts of the bodies need to be worked and then find a way to work on them in your body. This concept of making it work in your body is one of the things that I am personally most passionate about. Exercise is accessible to everyone, even if not all exercises are appropriate for every person. Doing weight-bearing exercise is an essential component of any plan to improve bone density, because when we have strong muscles, our muscles pull on our bones. The pull from our muscles to our bones is what actually stimulates our bodies to build more bone in a particular area. Our bodies will strengthen our bones in the areas where our bones are used. With osteoporosis, we want to strategically strengthen our bodies in the areas that are most prone to fracture. The areas that are most likely to fracture include our spines, hips and thighs, and our wrists. In the Lift More study that was published in 2018, several high-intensity exercises were selected to study that were chosen based on their ability to strengthen the spine, hips and thighs, and the wrists. The regimen consisted of two 30-minute gym sessions per week with five repetitions for each exercise, and this was done over an eight-month time period with supervision to ensure that the exercises were performed properly and safely. Alternatively, there was a group of women who did a series of low-intensity exercises at home. The study looked at 101 women between the ages of 60 and 70. These weightlifting exercises are designed to push a person hard. They include lifting heavy, and by heavy I mean at 85% of the maximum of what you can lift one time. This means that if you can lift 60 pounds once, then you would adjust to 85% of that 60 pounds, which would be 51 pounds. At the gym, this would end up working out to be 50 pounds since the increments that you would lift weights are available in that kind of increment. This is just an example. I'm not sure what the maximum amount that you can lift is. It's important to figure that out first. I encourage you to do this with another person, a spotter, to make sure that you do this safely and in good form to keep your back straight. Keeping your back from coming into a rounded shape is critical for each one of these exercises. At the end of the eight month study, results showed a 2.9% increase in bone mineral density at the spine for the group that was doing the high intensity resistance training. An increase at the femoral neck was very small at the end of the study. It was only 0.3%. This is still important because it means that bone mineral density was being maintained at the hip. The femoral neck is the curved part at the top of the thigh bone that connects into the hip bone. This is where many fractures happen at the hip. It's often difficult to get at the hips and strengthen them, so it is a major win that the hip was maintained with even a small gain. 
Moving into our demonstration, the first exercise from the study is a deadlift. Step up to the bar. Your feet should actually be shoulder width apart and your toes should go underneath the bar. Bend your knees deeply so that your hips are below your shoulders and pick the bar up with both hands over the top of the bar. Keep your back straight. It's important to keep your hips below your shoulders to lift from your upper back, not your low back. This exercise is designed to load weight into your back, but it's also important to protect your back and to not put too much pressure on your low back. When you pick the weight up, bring your shoulders back so that they're tight. This will help to load your spine and to not create a forward curve because your shoulders, when they're too far forward, it would be easy to bring them into a rounded shape. When you're there with your shoulders back, engage your tummy muscles and then proceed to lift the weight up. Squeeze your glutes at the top to help create stability. Bend your knees as you set the weight back down slowly. So let's talk about what's being worked on in the body during a deadlift and why it's beneficial for your bones. This exercise strengthens your core muscles your hamstrings that run along the back of your legs, your glutes, your spine, your arms, and your wrists. Your core and glute muscles provide essential support for your spine, which will help you to improve your posture and spare your spine, which will also help you to prevent compression fractures in your spine. Also, by strengthening your glutes and hamstrings, you work into your hip area strengthening it as well. You strengthen your wrists by picking up the weight which helps to protect them in the event that you lose your balance and throw your hands out to protect yourself from your fall. It's the first thing that we do when we fall. We throw our hands out to catch ourselves. This exercise requires a fair amount of flexibility from the hip. You have to be able to bend from the hip to do this exercise. You also have to have significant grip strength and strong knees to do this. We have to pick things up off the ground in our daily life and practicing the deadlift is one way to make sure that we can bend from the hip and to safely pick things up off the ground. The second exercise is a back squat. Move underneath the bar of the cage. Place both hands on the bar and lift the bar onto the top of your spine. This takes quite a bit of flexibility to be able to reach the bar on your back. With your feet about hip width apart, sit back. Make sure that you bring your bottom back behind you as far as you can, as you bend your knees as deeply as you can. This will help to spread the load of the weight. This helps to protect you from overloading the weight in your knees. Lower down slowly and then rise slowly back up with control and place the barbell back on the rack. So let's go over what muscle groups are being worked on in this exercise. First, let's talk about the, about the spine since there's a weight placed at the top of the spine. This exercise is going to load your entire spine, which is a great thing for improving bone health. The back squat also strengthens our core and glute muscles which as we went over in the previous exercise, help to provide long-term support for your spine. Another study that was published in 2018 compared planking and back squats. Researchers found that back squats stimulated more activation of the postural muscles of the back than planking did. Take a moment and picture squatting as a movement. Every time you come into a seated position and make your way back up to standing, you come into a version of a squat. It may not be as deep as this particular exercise, and it might not have added weight, but this is a movement that you use as part of your everyday life. Working to strengthen the muscles that are on both the front and back of your legs, as well as the muscles that are in your hips, all make it easier to move throughout your everyday life, doing daily tasks, moving to a seated position, standing back up. The third exercise is the overhead lift. Before you pick the weight up, make sure that your grip 
is just outside of shoulder width. You'll begin by doing a deadlift to bring your barbell up to your waist and then bring the barbell up to your chest. Alternatively, you could begin by lifting the weight off of a rack from the weight cage. With the weight at your chest, bring your elbows slightly forward to engage your chest muscles. Also make sure that your elbows aren't flaring out to the sides. Look forward and not up. You want your back to stay straight, not come into a back bend for this exercise. Lift the weight straight up over the crown of your head. When you bring the weight back down, use your shoulders as a cushion for the weight to rest on. As you lift the weight up and down, keep your hips underneath your shoulders and use your tummy muscles to help create stability for yourself as you do this movement. So one way to test whether or not this is an appropriate exercise for you to do is to reach your arms up overhead. If you have the mobility to reach your arms up overhead so that your arm is in alignment with your ear and your back is relatively straight, not thrusting out, then this would be an appropriate exercise for you to try. If when you reach your arms up overhead, you discover that your arms are actually out in front of you, then don't give this exercise a try. Pay attention to where you currently are before deciding whether or not this exercise is something to try. Reaching overhead is a movement that's part of our regular daily life. We might reach up for something up high in a kitchen cupboard or in our pantries, or we might be traveling and trying to reach to put a bag in an overhead bin on an airplane. This exercise strengthens your arms, your shoulders, your hands, wrists, your abdominal muscles, and your back. This exercise uses your deep abdominal muscles that act as your body's natural weight belt, helping your body to provide much needed support for the spine. This exercise also strengthens the low back, which is a good thing for bone health. The fourth and last exercise from the study is a combination of a pull-up and a drop-down from the pull-up bar. I can't do a pull-up, period. If you can, I am impressed. It's a major accomplishment. That said, there's still a major benefit to just hanging, which we'll talk about as I attempt to do a pull-up. To do a pull-up, stand directly underneath the bar. Reach your arms up placing them slightly wider than shoulder width apart. Wrap your fingers over the bar, come into a hanging position with your body straight and your feet close together. Engage both your glutes and your tummy muscles to create stability. You might even try pointing your toes here. Look up towards your hands and bring your scapulas closer toward each other. As you pull up, Lean back a little bit to leave a clear path towards your chest. Make this more of a rowing motion rather than a straight pull upwards. The last part of this exercise from the Lift More study is to jump down from the pull-up bar. This creates impact, which in theory is good for bones. It can also potentially be dangerous depending on how severe your osteoporosis is. This goes right along with the concept that running and jumping are good for building bone. This is generally true prior to developing osteoporosis, but they can create too large of an impact that might potentially lead to having a compression fracture after someone develops osteoporosis. This is going to be really personal. Let me caveat this by saying that if you've been a runner, it's probably safe to continue running. But if you haven't been a runner, and you suddenly decide to take up running after developing osteoporosis, make sure that you start really slowly and carefully. Begin with a very soft jog and gradually work your way up to a stronger, larger impact. So coming back to looking at the jump down from the bar, this is something that if you're gonna attempt, you should probably do this under the supervision of either a physical therapist or other trained exercise professional who works with people who have osteoporosis really regularly. It also isn't something that I would recommend if you're below a negative 3.5 on your DEXA with your T-score. 
As you can see, I can't do a pull-up. But let's talk about the benefits of just hanging. And then let me show you a progression of how to work towards being able to do a pull-up. Hanging increases our grip strength. Grip strength is a longevity factor on its own. The muscles that control our grip strength actually run through the wrists and forearms. So when you strengthen your grip, you're strengthening your wrists. Wrists are the third most common osteoporotic fracture because if you fall, probably the first thing that you do is throw out your hands to catch you. This movement often leads to wrist fractures and that's better than breaking a hip. So don't stop throwing your hands out if you happen to fall. But it's also a really good idea to work on strengthening your grip strength. In addition to increasing grip strength, engaging your core and glute muscles and the muscles in your back while you hang increase your stability, which will improve your posture and your balance. It also provides long-term support for the spine. Hanging will also increase your ability to open up through the shoulders, which will help to get you to a point where you can do the overhead lift. Hanging is worth it even if you can't pull up. So let's talk about what else you can do to work towards being able to do a pull-up. There's a variation of a pull-up called the Australian pull-up where you use a bar that's down lower. Let me demonstrate this. Bring your arms out in front of you directly from your chest. Bring your body to a diagonal angle with your heels pressing into the floor. From here, pull yourself closer to the bar. This is a bit like the opposite of doing a push-up. If you're just starting out, your angle might not be very deep, and that's okay. Strength is built gradually over time. And the more that you do this, you will gradually build strength and you'll be able to come into a deeper and deeper angle, which will help you to build more strength in preparation for doing a full pull-up. Pull-ups, whether done in a bar or up high, benefit the body in numerous ways. Pull-ups work several major muscle groups in the upper back, including the lats, the traps, and the rhomboids. These muscle groups, in turn, will pull on the bones in your back, strengthening them and improving your bone quality and mass. They also help to improve your posture, which reduces the risk of having a compression fracture in the spine. The takeaway from looking at this study is that it's important to find ways in your body to work on strengthening your back, core, glutes, and hips. It's also important to increase flexibility to be able to move with greater ease in your daily life and to spare your spine. Understanding conceptually what's being worked on in the Lift More study opens up a whole world of possibilities for finding exercises that work these same areas in your body, even if it takes longer to progress than the eight-month period that's demonstrated in this study. You're still moving forward when you work on exercises that target these areas of the body. And it's important to exercise and do these things consistently. I hope that looking at these exercises in depth is insightful and encouraging for you to find ways to work on these parts of your body. If they are, please share this video with someone that you know and love. Let's work on reducing fractures and improving bone health together. I look forward to talking with you soon.